Alex, we know the, the Premier League first day fixtures are out. Ipswich, Liverpool, what a start for both McKenna and uh, and Slot. Chelsea, Manchester City, Maresca against Pep, Leicester, Tottenham, to name but three elsewhere. Newcastle against Southampton. I mean, some of them really grab the eye, don't they? Yeah, it looks a, a fantastic opening weekend. Uh, all starts at Old Trafford on the Friday night, live on Talk Sport. Manchester United against Fulham. I guess a little bit of a homecoming uh, for Eric Ten Hag now that we know he's staying. Uh, I've been looking a bit further ahead towards the back end of the season. Manchester City, uh, not for the first time, seem to have quite a favourable run in. Uh, and we expect <laughs> them to be right up there competing for the title. Three of their final ten games of the season, only three, are against teams who finished the top half last season. That includes Palace and Villa. And an interesting little subplot when it comes to Everton. We know it'll be their farewell season at Goodison Park. They actually asked the Premier League for special dispensation to move their final home game so that it wouldn't be played on the final weekend of the season. They were worried that maybe that farewell would be lost amongst stories of who was going for the title and, and relegation perhaps. So they'll play at home against Southampton on the penultimate weekend of the season. That'll be their Goodison Park farewell. It's actually something that, Simon, when you hear that, uh, the, the farewell season at Goodison, because what a stadium. Yeah. And what history. Yeah, but everything evolves, doesn't it? And the opportunity for them to... I mean, one of the things that you cannot um, argue or discredit, because there's plenty of things that you can argue and discredit over Mashiri's um, tenure, is that he has delivered them with an outcome as far as the stadium's concerned. And speaking to certain people um, that are in and around the ownership, potential ownership of Everton... There is a real enthusiasm and a real opportunity with this stadium. It presents a real new dawn for Everton. All the doom and gloom mm. and the cost implications and who's going to own the, f the football club, whether it's my friend George or whether it's Dan Friedkin, whatever. You, 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 there's a brighter future coming for Everton. There's a brighter set of opportunities. And one of them is the fact that you will have a stadium that has huge opportunities to generate proper grown-up, mature thinking revenue streams that digitalize the fan base and turn it into an enabled environment that will benefit the football club, take it forward, and ultimately put Everton back in a position where they're not a club that's financially uh, you know, in great difficulties and a club that's again looking upwards rather yes. than looking behind itself exactly. for the challenges. Uh, yeah, they, they, they're duty bound to give Evertonians a spring in their step, aren't they? Yeah. Um, who's the jury out on Alex next season? Postecoglou, Eddie Howe, Mikel Arteta, what do you think? It's interesting when you ask about Mikel Arteta because obviously at the start of his tenure he got the FA Cup behind closed doors very early. Arsenal fans weren't particularly happy with the league form. I think they finished like Manchester United did this season uh, as low as eighth in the table. Now Arsenal fans are very much on side. Of course they finished runners up to Manchester City once again this season but he has spent a lot of money, Mikel Arteta, and it has been a long time since they won a trophy. And I think if they don't put a trophy in the cabinet again this season, then, then maybe you need to start to look at net spend and think, well, actually, has he achieved as much as he possibly could? Yeah, that, I think that's fair, Simon, isn't it? Um, not necessarily, because you've got yourself second in the Premier League behind this immovable object, which is Manchester City. The progress for Man... You know, this is the price on the ticket. You want to be at the top of the pyramid of English football, playing in the Champions League, which opens the revenue opportunities, which enables you to build. You've had an ownership model that prior to COVID was accused of being asleep at the wheel that didn't invest. So it's now caught up. Yes, the, the spend has been rel relatively prolific over the last three seasons, but they're now at, at one of the elite sides. They're now gone. They've gone into European competition for the first time in the Champions League for a period of time, and they de they went moderately deep. So the next question is, they've proven that they've got a squad that can operate on two fronts uh, in terms of playing in the European competition. Next stage is, they try and win the Premier League. They won the FA Cup three years ago. These tournaments are nice tournaments to have. They're vanity plays, but Arsenal's pursuit is to be the top of the Premier League, and they're getting closer to it. Five or four points more this season than last. Far more. A substance about Arsenal than the previous season, I think. So I think there's a lot more about Arsenal than just the fact they spent a lot of money. But still missed opportunities though, Simon. Aston Villa at home when they could have been three or four up, lost that game, ultimately cost them the title, went to oh, Man oh, City, absolutely. didn't try and attack. Well, it's the, it's the fixtures over Christmas that you can look at. Yeah. You can say that the two fixtures against Aston Villa and Unai Emery outthinking Arteta. Can he do it again next season? Because Arteta evolves quickly and learns. That's the great thing about people. It's not making a mistake, it's repeating mistakes. But you look at the Christmas period and I think it was Fulham and West Ham, was was, yeah. And those are the games that ultimately did for them because during that period of time, Man City's engine started to fire up. I think there's lots about Arsenal that you say under Arteta, and some might say, so there bloody should be. If yeah, you yeah, spend yeah. 600 million exactly. quid, yeah. yes. so you should be. But there is, and he has. People waste money.
Alex, on two other names, actually, as we take it up to 11.30, back home, 12.30 here. Postacoglu, Eddie Howe. I mean, jury out to a degree. What do they have to do? Um, I, I think when it comes to Postacoglu, yes, because you look at the start they had. I don't think any team had taken as many points in Premier League history from the first 10 games and not managed to finish in the top four. I do feel it was a missed opportunity for Spurs to let Villa finish ahead of them when Chelsea and United basically checked out for most of the season. I think they should have got Champions League football. So I think, yeah, he does need to start the season well. Eddie Howe's interesting because if you flip their seasons around, he overachieved uh, the season before last to get them into the top four. Uh, then they did get a European place, had that snatched away from them by the fact Manchester United won the FA Cup. So I think if you ask Newcastle fans... They're very much on side with Eddie Howe. The trouble he's got is we never quite know what the, the Saudi owners are thinking and, and how ambitious they want to be. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.